Have you ever watched a movie and immediately after felt like Roddy Piper from 1988's They Live? What's your problem? I said, what's your problem? Well, that's how I felt after watching The Invisible Man. All right, let me clarify what I mean. When this movie came out originally, I initially checked out the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, and they were surprisingly good. I mean, quite a bit better than I could have ever imagined, and so I was looking forward to checking it out. Time passed, never got around to it. It's been on my queue for some time. This is one of the first quarantine movies. And finally, I saw it. And I still had that memory of the Rotten Tomatoes score in my head. But I thought, I have to be wrong here. And immediately after, I checked the Rotten Tomatoes score. What? So then, right after that, I checked the Metacritic score. What? And then I decided I'd give it one more chance. Chris Stuckman, probably the biggest movie reviewer on all of YouTube, did a review for it, and I watched his video. I'm gonna give The Invisible Man a B plus. I am really excited to see what else Lee Winnell does. What? B plus. What? B plus. What? B plus. All right, you can probably tell I'm not a huge fan of this movie, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Invisible Man was written and directed by Lee Winnell, who you may remember as the overacting screaming guy in the first Saw. <laughs> and it stars Elizabeth Moss who's a great actress. I love everything I've seen her in. Once again, a bit of a surprise here. A great star, great reviews, what could go wrong? This movie has an interesting opening. It, it hooked me in. We're starting media res, where we have Cecilia, played by Elizabeth Moss, in a bed in this immaculate house, laying next to a man that is her husband or boyfriend, lover of some kind. And She's trying to sneak away. Why does she want to sneak away from this life? And anyway, she frantically makes her way through a forest to meet who we find out later is her sister in a car. And just as they escape, this man makes it down to the car, punches through the glass, but they still get away successfully. Now presumably safe in her friend's house, we find out that yes, in fact, she was in an abusive relationship with her husband who is this optics genius who has this company and that's pretty much all we know about him, ever. And we follow her, always looking over her shoulder, never thinking she's safe, until we learn that her husband has died, or has he? So, what did I think about it? Well, from the first scene, when she's at her friend's house, it has this very mainstream, poorly written feeling to it. It's kind of hard to explain, it's just this instinctual gut feeling you get when you see how a scene is presented, how the characters interact, what the dialogue is like, all of it. But I stuck with it. I wanted to see it through. I think I even said something along the lines, I have a feeling this is going to be a bad movie. And now remember, I had high expectations going into this. I, I assumed it was going to be good based on everything I'd seen. There's all these plot devices that just felt off like the security camera which i think worked in the opening scene it repeats throughout the movie it never feels like there's a purpose there they just always feel random they never feel a part of the narrative they never feel like a, a visual device that's that really makes sense and there's also a bit of odd foreshadowing here i don't want to spoil the scene but it felt like a scene that did nothing except try to create this moment so maybe you could recall it later. It didn't feel integrated into the plot, didn't feel integrated into what the characters were doing. It felt very random to me and forced. It does come to fruition later, but because it had no meaning or no real subtext early on, it feels empty and laughable. I think one of the failings with this movie is the antagonist. So uh, as I read in the, the description online about the novel Invisible Man, we learned that the story is about this guy who is an optic, a genius of optics and makes himself invisible. And he's dealing with that and the repercussions of it and, and exploring 
what he can do with his newfound power. And that's why it's noted as a cautionary tale. In this movie, it's, it's turned on its head. We are focused on the victim of this invisible man. And we never get to know him. And you should always know your villain. You should always understand the motivations of the villain. You don't have to necessarily agree with them, but you need to, they need to make sense. And here, there is a line where the villain does describe why he's doing this. And it's just completely laughable. And speaking of that, there's a scene where the famous hero at the, uh, the mercy of the villain scene, where, you know the scene I'm talking about, it's, it's where the, the villain explains what they're going to do because and why they're doing it, because they know that they have the hero at their mercy and they're going to win. At least they think so. This one is a joke. It's bad. I think I laughed out loud. But there is a shining star. There is a silver lining of this entire thing. And that is Elizabeth Moss. She is amazing in it. She brought everything she had to this role. Her face gets crazier and crazier and crazier as she descends into madness. I think it's only rivaled by Claire Dane's face in Homeland. So the interesting thing about this movie is I felt like all the pieces were there. They just were scattered and not put together very well. Elizabeth Moss's performance, as I said, was the only thing that worked for me in this entire movie. And I, I'm just baffled at the positive reviews this thing got. It wasn't even exciting as a thriller. I couldn't even get into it on a superficial level. Why was everybody so blind? So should you watch it? Well, I guess one redeeming quality of it is if you, if you want to watch it to laugh at it, make sure you're watching it with a friend and you guys can make fun of it together because I think that's probably the only good time you're going to have in this movie. If you're looking for a thriller that's going to keep you on the edge of your seat, full of successful jump scares and clever plot devices, this movie has none of that. I know I keep saying this, but... It's so unfortunate because Elizabeth Moss really brought it to this movie. I, I, hope, I hope she got a good paycheck. That's all I can say. I'm going to have to give The Invisible Man a 4 out of 10. I was going to give it a 3, but I knocked it up one point for Elizabeth Moss's performance. If you saw this movie and loved it, please, please, please let me know why. I need to know. I really need to know. And if you hated it like I did, please let me know. I'm not the only one out there. Now, if you'd like to see me create some stuff rather than critiquing other people's work, please check out my series, Worth 1000 Words, where I write a short story based on a piece of artwork, like a writing prompt. And I hope you enjoyed this short, scattered review. I know I didn't go into a lot of depth. I wanted to stay away from spoilers. Thank you, Elizabeth Moss, for making this somewhat bearable. And thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Take a look. Take